All right, all right, y'all. Welcome, welcome to Social Proof. Where are you guys at? Where are you guys at? Welcome to Free Smoke. It is Free Smoke Friday, and of course, you don't hear me? It's, it's me. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Great afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Free Smoke Friday. What's up? What's up? Come on in because y'all, today we got a treat for you. Okay. So go ahead, J Star. Get us, get us good. Get us right. Get it, get the energy going. Right. Go ahead. Look, I ain't got time for this small talk. Your big plans coming up short. I call it how I see it, don't get mad at me. In a room full of winners is why I'd rather be. Every new level you reach come with jealousy. You gotta watch the way you move, we call it strategy. Official with the game, curry with the three. If you need some social proof, you know we got receipts. But don't you never let them doubters win. Watch your back, your biggest foes can be your closest friends. They say the enemy is just your enemy. Quit trying to do life by yourself, you need community. Ain't somebody with wealth that did it by themselves. Why you stressing about them people who deny your health? And keep on making moves with no apologies. But if they want smoke, we get that for free. That's what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. That's what I'm talking That's about. That's hard. <laughs> That's hard. That's what I'm talking about. What's up, family? Whether you are coming in from Instagram or YouTube, welcome yeah, to yeah. Free Smoke Friday, y'all. Look, I'm not in the building by myself. Okay, first and foremost, you might have noticed Dave ain't here with us today, all right? He a little bit under the weather, and we told him to keep that to himself. So, I got somebody else. He, he about to roll with me out today. Jamel, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's your one and only relationship mechanic, Jamel Jackson. Mm. I focus on giving people tools to build and have healthy relationships. Awesome. Yes. Y'all got healthy relationships out there? Well, Y'all be struggling. How, what? <laughs> Let me know in the chat what, what those relationships really looking like. All right. But guys, y'all, I know all of us got a story, right? We all got, turn me up, J-Star. I'm on my day shift. Turn me up. <laughs> <laughs> I know we all got a story out there to tell. We know we can speak. We know we can communicate it. But do you really know how to get to the bag when it comes to it? Like, I mean, really get the money because of your story, because of the lives you can change, because of the minds that you can change, the impact that you can have. All of us have a story to share, but you know you are doing no justice if you keep it to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So today we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty of crafting our story, but also how we can make the money because of it. And Jamal and I can, kinda came together a little bit about what it takes. So first and foremost, you gotta know who your audience is. You can't mm -hmm. just be telling your story to any and everybody because it's gonna fall upon deaf ears. You might catch a few people, but you ain't gonna catch the people that you're really trying to reach, right? So we have to understand who these people are, the pain that they're going through, the challenges that they're experiencing, and then we have to know how we can help them through that process, mm -hmm. how to help them through those challenges and get to the other side because you've been there, yeah. right? You have to be able to relate with them. Jamal, what's the next one? I think you, you, you pointed out two powerful words. You said pain and challenges, and story deals with the account of someone's past events. Right. And I think we gotta accept our stories. Mm -hmm. And realize this, your wounds were intended to heal somebody else's. Right. So a lot of times our past, our stories may be stories of wounds and we don't want to express it. But when you accept that, then you understand that, listen, I got a story to tell. And when I tell this story, it's going to set someone else free. So accepting your past. Yes. Accepting that story. Ooh, accepting your past. Because a lot of us, we still got some trauma we got to deal with before we can start helping other people. All right. What, what do you think is next in regards to after we get our audience? After you get your audience, have confidence. Because you could have an audience, but I believe you need to have confidence in yourself to speak to that audience. Mm. When you identify that audience, you got to have confidence in yourself. And that confidence comes from surrounding yourself with the right, the right people, the right quorum of people. That also, So if your confidence is low, they can build you up right. and give you that push to step in front of that audience. Awesome. Awesome. And then y'all, 
I think you need to craft your signature story. Mm. You have to craft it. We all know, we all know that one person that want our favorite speaker, our favorite motivational speaker, our favorite business entrepreneur, but we know they story like the back of our hands better than we know our own, right? I know everybody, Les Brown, you know, you gotta be hungry, right? So you have to craft your signature story. You have to have something that is going to set you apart from everybody else and you gotta know it, like the back of your hand so that they can recite it to you. You can just sit there and let them do your own your own speech for you, right? Next up, what, what, what do you think after our... Man, there's so much in this, but I want to leave. I want to leave this information for the guru himself. Damn, okay. I'm like put me the guru in, coach. Yeah. I, 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 listen, I can feel, I can feel the energy from coming from over here. I can feel the energy coming from over here. So I'm like, oh, I know he's ready to talk spicy. Yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, y'all, we got the the master of storytelling yes. himself in the building with us today y'all when i tell you like even my three-year-old be reciting stuff from him mm. okay and it is so powerful mm. always grateful but you never come on, settle come on. all right my three-year-old that's part of her affirmations i love it but this gentleman he knows how to shift minds like nobody's yes, business when i y'all if you're not putting a morning meetup he was mm. on there and he came in and he killed it and then left the building like he ain't just do nothing but it's all good because today he about to give you guys all the free smoke, Mr. Jeremy Anderson himself. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's, happening? What's, happening? What's, happening? What's going on? Man, locked in. I'm ready. Y'all sitting here talking. I got laser beams in my eyes. I'm focused. <laughs> yeah, I feel good, man. You know How what? Feeling? I, I got a question right out the gate. Talk to me. Because we hear message, but inside that message, you hear mess. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes we don't want to talk about the mess. Right. How important is it, Jeremy, to really accept that mess, even though it may have been painful, you've came out of it, but how important is it to take that and craft that into a message? Yeah, so I'll, so I'll say this. So whenever somebody hits me and they like, yo, Jay, I want to become a speaker to get to the bag, I'm, I'm on like, okay, let me pause. If that's your number one thing and you don't care about people. Because mm. I realized, like, I can't cast my pearls to swine. Like, the game I give, the people in our community making six figures a year, some of them six figures a quarter, in their 20s and 30s, mm. right? And so when you look at somebody, but I, I want to make sure their hearts are pure. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like I want to make sure you even in the position to even be able to be able to manage this type of income that's going to come your way. Mm. So to answer your question, yes, with every message, there's a mess. Like, bro, man, bro, we real live humans. Like, we regular people that be going through it. So I tell people all the time, like, yo, you got a mess. You got a message. You got a story. It's only a testimony if you testify. I'm telling people all the time, like, you got you to gotta share it because your what you went through, your pain can be somebody else's gain. But mm -hmm. the problem in our society today is everybody want to live in that Instagram world where it's just like, man, it's me. Woke up like this. It's like, nah, boo-boo, you didn't. You went through some stuff. You actually woke Facts. up depressed, you know what I'm saying, put a little concealer on, fixed the light, got the cold out your eyes, then took the pic. We live in a world where everybody is like, look at me, I'm perfect. It's like, no, when you stand up and say, hey, I went through some things, depression, hardships, I done lost children, I went through divorce, I done had my house going to foreclosure, like I went through some stuff, but I overcame it. That mm. perseverance. People pay me for my perseverance, bro. Yeah. They don't pay me for all the depth and insight. They like, bro, you went through hell and back. I want to hear what you got to say. Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah. sense? No, it So does. I tell people, don't run from your message. We've heard it before, right? Count it all joy. Yeah. When mm -hmm. fiery trials and persecution come up because it, it's going to help build that perseverance. It helps build your faith so you're not lacking nothing. What if I told you when the word says your gifts will make room for you? Mm -hmm. What if I told you your gift was pain? Yeah, what if I told you? That. Oh, come we on, bro. That. People don't want to hear like that. It's like all the abuse, all the hurt, all of that was actually a gift because when the word says that I'm going to make your enemy your footstools, that's what's built your platform. Don't right. do it. For you to stand don't on. Don't do it. Yeah. Talk to me. Don't do no, it. Yeah. Hey, oh, listen, listen, today. listen, listen, because I think sometimes, I mean, we live in a society. I don't want to mm -hmm. say generation because I believe it's all ages. Absolutely. But we live in a society where people are like, okay, when I'm healed and whole, then I'll present myself. Mm -hmm. But some like people you. don't have time for you to be healed and whole. Your brokenness is directly connected to somebody's breakthrough. It, yes. yes. And I will say this, and I agree. But you do need to be healed and whole. I'm not saying rush yeah, out right, there. Right, right, but there's sure. moments in time yes. where, listen, I could walk out right now and there's some things I'm dealing with. Come on. But my brokenness for that next person is their breakthrough. Right, for right. sure. So I tell pe some people, some guys hit me and they like, man, I want to one day speak for corporate or speak for the NBA or the NFL. Like I see what ET doing. I see what Inky doing. Like y'all out here killing it. 
And I'm like, okay, bro, like, you're not quite ready for that yet. Mm. And they're like, okay, well, I got to hit a certain number. Like, I got to make a certain amount of money. I'm like, bro, wherever you are right now, you're making $15, $20 an hour. That's cool. You can go to a middle school and speak. You can go to a high school and speak. You feel me? Like, you can you can work on that level right there. And so I tell people, like, life as life grows you, and as you grow in life, it's going to expand your territory so it's more people you can speak to. Because there was a time when I was getting booked for churches, and it was like, oh, you church. And I'm like, bro, I want to speak to adults. I got mm. more to say. And God was like, oh, you ready to speak to adults? I'm like, take me to the next level. And then he took me down through there in my marriage, which gave me a different type of depth to be able to speak from, mm. from that bigger platform. But then there are moments when I had people in our program I'm like, hey, let's put a pause on the coaching. Mm. You need to go get some healing. Yeah. Because you on stage sharing your speech and you can't even get through it because you breaking out crying. Yeah. So it's just like, so there are times when people might need to get some inner healing, some inner peace, some inner strength, work through some stuff, and now they're ready to share their message with the world. Mm. Which, 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 really I, quick. Go ahead. I'm going to jump in because y'all, y'all on. came out the Come gate. On. Right? Come on. Really quick, y'all. Of course, we got to do our our house rules because y'all in big mama's house all right <laughs> so we gotta make sure that y'all know what you gotta do if you are on youtube if you're on instagram hop on over to youtube because eventually we're gonna cut y'all off y'all can't mm. get all the goods y'all can't get all the sauce but today y'all make sure you go ahead and share this live with five friends i don't care if they got a story they don't got a story they need help with their story whatever the case may be go ahead and share this live with five friends make sure you like it and if you loving the information because they already coming in with the heat make sure you drop a super chat because guess what that super chat isn't going into our pockets it's helping david and his friends to go around to the schools of inner cities and teach entrepreneurship to these young children y'all we got to teach them now teach them get them now while we can so that when they get older it's all the seed is already planted inside of them all right so go ahead drop the super chat sow into those churn Yes, those churn. And we're going to get right back into this conversation. Go ahead, y'all. Yep. I'm listening to what you're saying. And I know you, you, you're you going to be able to, to unravel this. Faithful over few, rule over much. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about these different levels. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be at middle school. You could be at the corporate. Mm -hmm. But do you, do you help people manage their message? Basically, how you were saying right there, like, hey, okay, you cool for middle school, not ready for corporate. For sure. When do you know that somebody's like, you know what, you can, you can step into this corporate I, arena? <clears throat> so whenever people are asking me, like, okay, Jeremy, I got a message, I got a story, but I'm trying to figure out who my audience is. You got to ask yourself, okay, who can most relate to your story? Mm -hmm. Who can most relate to your message? What industry, what group or body of people can you add the most value to? And then when you sit back and say, and then, and then what areas do they have the most credibility in? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because there are people that want to speak in industries, but it's like you ain't really credible on that. Yeah. We're not going to do the college professor that teaches business, but they never started the business. We're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Or like a relationship <laughs> guru. You Come on, bro. You ain't never had no You ain't never been. In, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so I tell people all the time, like, you really got to pace yourself when you're mm -hmm. trying to figure out what audience and what group of people to work with. But like even me, right? I, for I've been doing this for 14 years now. Corporate, churches, schools. But I was all over the place. E.T. was like, bro, you look like a handyman. Trim it down. And we had some very hard conversations. And I really wasn't feeling it. Because I'm like, bro, but you a, you a pastor? You speak for the NBA, NFL, corporate, and you in schools? Like, I want to do it all. He was like, but I'm not branding myself as an all of the above speaker. He was like, you can do good, make six figures. But if you're going to dominate, choose a particular industry. So for me, I was like, I'm going to cut corporate. I'm not going to brand that. Do I take opportunities at that time? Yes. Mm -hmm. I put all my focus in the school space. I would still get opportunities to go to churches and things like that. And about two years ago, uh, Crump, our director, my right-hand man, was like, he heard me say in an interview that I'm one of the top youth speakers, one of the top educational speakers. He's like, Nick, if you ever say that, brother, if you ever say that again, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, bro, he's like, bro, you got several multi-million dollar companies. We got 20 plus employees. You got two nonprofits, one overseas. He said, bro, I'm 40 years old. You're the best leader I've ever worked with. Mm. He was like, bro, you better not ever say you a youth speaker or a top educational speaker. He was just like, bro, it's time for the world to see the fullness of who you are. So mm. I realized like, whoa, yeah, I do got a whole lot more to offer. Check. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. now I'm creating messages in alignment with like topics like occupational integrity because I'm looking at what I went through in my own company, in my own business. How do we have this type of culture within an organization where people don't want to leave so now corporations is bringing me in? Like the energy you got with your organization, we want that energy here. So that's like I grew into 
my next level. Does yeah. that make sense? No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Listen, when I'm doing relationship coaching, I always say people like the idea of the relationship, but they don't like the commitment, the effort, or the work Absolutely. that it takes to maintain that or keep it. So even when you're talking about speaking, how important is it with having these relationships in terms of coaching mm -hmm. with the people that you have within your organization, doing that mentorship, joining these um, programs to get paid speaking gigs? How important is that? So I, I feel like it's everything. I tell people all the time, you can Google some stuff. You can figure it out on your own. Mm. That's what E.T. did. E.T. didn't have no coach, no mentor. I had a coach and mentor through him. He gave me some game, but a lot of it also was trial and error. So we came together now, and we said, you know what? Our legacy ain't going to be we the best speakers in the world. Our legacy going to be our program has trained and equipped the most speakers. We realized how people need coaching. People need that game. People need that insight. I'm on some discipleship stuff, bro. Mm. When you look at the Messiah, he had he was him. He had his 12. Inside the 12, he had Peter, James, and John. Then he had the 12 on the day of Pentecost, 3,000. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like so I'm on, like, multiplying, mm. right? And so in my brain, I'm like, man, I want to train and equip and help as many people as possible go out here and monetize their message, right? Make impact and income. Like, they can live a life of purpose, Right. And still get paid for it. And so that's the space I'm in. But a lot of people it's like, I'm going to figure it out on my own. I'm like, bro, go for it then. Yeah. Right. But mentorship is what got me to where I am. You know what I'm saying? And so I tell people all the time, like, you got to find a coach and a mentor, but not just anybody. Find somebody that's credible. Mm -hmm. Find somebody that has at least 10 years experience. I'm on some other stuff. Is there somebody that can be successful in two years or something mm -hmm. and give you game? Yes. But if I'm going to spend my money, I want to work with OG, triple OG. Right. So I'm like, I need a track record. I want to see how you went during the pandemic. How do you survive during a recession? So I'm like, you need to find somebody that got 10 years of experience that operated at the highest level. And then when you're looking for a coach and mentor, do they got anybody else that they built up? Mm. Do they got anybody else that wants to be where you are or is it just them? Right. And then the last thing is make sure your values, their values are in alignment with yours. Because mm. there are a lot of people out here that are coach and mentor you. But in, but in the core of who they are, the values are not in alignment. And that can just make for a wonky um, relationship. Yeah, I always say that that valuable people attract people of value. I've been mm -hmm. saying that for years, you know, mm -hmm. and you're hitting on some powerful points, Jay. Listen, how important is humility in this? Because we're talking about crafting your message, paid mm -hmm. speaking gigs, and do you accept every paid gig? Because some people come in right out the, like, out the back, like, I'm trying to get to the bag. I know the message is important, but I'm trying to get to the bag. Is every bag a good bag? Mm, that's a good question. Is every bag a good bag? I mean, no. Like, if a Satanist convention want to book me, Brian about to go speak to a right, bunch of right. Satanists. That's, that's obvious, though. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm saying, but so I haven't, I haven't, I've ne the only time I would turn down the organization is if I feel like I'm not a good fit, our values are not aligned, or if I can't add the value you're looking for, mm -hmm. right? But that's been, bro, I can't even name a few. I'm sure it's happened once or twice where I'm like, yeah, no, nah, that's not me. Um, but I do think there has to be that level of humility. You know what I'm saying? Because again, bro, what we teach, what we help people do, bro, is potent. Yeah. Like it, bro, like people is changing, not just changing lives from the microphone, monetarily, bro. Mm -hmm. I think about Kevon Lee, bro, my man, 24 years old, bro, living in Southern California, and he made six figures in his first three months with us. Let's go. Six figures, bro. In his first, like he got busy. And so I'm like, man, I want to work with people, though, who got pure hearts, mm. not just somebody that want to get to the bag. Now, if you hit me like, man, I got a message, I got a story, I want to bless the people, and I'm going to get to the bag, bet. But if you only want that paper, like, we not in alignment then. Because I don't speak to eat. I speak to feed. Mm -mm. There's a difference, bro. I don't speak to eat. I speak to feed. And I'm feeding people with that microphone, with my mouth, right? I'm feeding, I'm feeding their hearts. I'm feeding their minds. I'm feeding their souls. I'm feeding their spirits. But then the resources I have, I had a conversation this morning with my wife. We met with our director in South Africa. There's a whole nother community we about to feed. So we've been averaging for the last two years, feeding a thousand people literally every single week in South Africa. Mm. I don't speak to eat, bro. I speak to feed. So now when corporations see like, yo, you charge us forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, yes, but when you went to my website, you see the philanthropic work I'm doing out here. Yeah. And you've seen all the kids. We got 60 kids now we sponsored in college, feeding thousands of people per week. I don't speak to eat, I speak to feed. So I tell people all the time, like, make sure your heart and your intentions are right when you get with me and I'm gonna take you to the next level. 
What's been one of your challenges? You go to that platform because most people, you know, we getting into speaking and we get we we see the platform. We like, I want to be up there where Jeremy is. I want to be like Jeremy on that platform because look how he's impacting all these lives in the world. And some people go after the platform not knowing what comes with that. Mm-hmm. What's been one of the most difficult challenges you've had with being on that platform? You know, a lot of times people want the stage, um, but they don't want the sacrifice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like people want the check but they don't have the character. You know what I'm saying? And so I tell people all the time, like, you you got to grow. Like, God will bless you with what he can trust you with. Like, I know why God put me on the sidelines last year. Like, I know why God was like, you're doing a lot, I'm going to sit you down. Like, I know why God was like, you're not ready for where I'm about to take you. You know what I'm saying? Like, he put me on pause. Like, you're doing great. Yep, hold on. But 2024 about to be crazy, right? So I tell people all the time, like, to pace themselves as they go throughout this journey. So the biggest challenge, the biggest struggle, oftentimes can be success. You know what I'm saying? Because it's easy to start feeling yourself. Mm-hmm. It's easy to feel like I'm the man. And so you have to do a lot. I, I do a lot of mindset work. I remember one time I was talking to my homeboy, and God stopped me, bro. I said, yeah, bro, I got to go to New York. Then I got to go to Vancouver and then Southern California to speak. And then God was like, you got to or you get to? Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah. Oh, I'm tripping. I'll say, man, I, I get to go to California. I get to go to Vancouver and speak. Like, it's an honor to do this work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm different, bro. Yeah. One of my favorite female preachers, Christine Kane, says there are people that's very motivational, very inspirational, that can go on stage and, like, make you feel good. But those with the anointing can break strongholds. Yeah. So God was like, bro, don't go up there in your own strength. Like, don't go up there just super motivational because you could tell some good stories and speak with passion. Like, you tap into that spirit so you can really shift something inside them. Mm-hmm. Contrary to popular belief, I believe all speaking is uh, spiritual. Yeah. I feel like it's all ministry in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, bro. So the, the, the responsibility, the challenge can be, okay, let me remind myself it's not the check. So now I got a team in place. I don't even want to know how much the gig is. You gave him a discount. It's only 30000 I don't want to know. I want to keep my heart pure. Just tell me when to show up. If it's free, I don't want to know. Just tell me when to show up. Tell me what to speak about. What are their pain points? What are they struggling with? How I can add the most value? Give me the demographics. Let me do that. Because it ain't going to make a difference in how much I'm getting paid, whether it's free or whether it's fifty grand. i am still going to do my part. So the challenge for a lot of speakers is like staying grounded. Because mm. then you can get that grind where it's like, yeah, I want to make more money. And I'm just like... Yeah, it ain't about that. I talked to one of them. I'm just one more person. Yeah, go ahead. Atia Johnson. Man, I love Atia, man. She got such a great spirit. She does hair for a living, right? We helped her. She got a $75,000 contract, a school program for young girls. She's like, I've been doing hair, making her feel beautiful on the outside. I'm going to show these queens how to be beautiful on the inside. I gave her some strategies. She put together another thing. She had another program for $75,000 and another school for $85,000. I did the numbers. I'm like, girl, that's almost a quarter million. I was like, praise God. She's like, yep, coach. So I'm coasting. I said, wrong. Mm. I said, wrong. Miss me with the coasting. She was like, man, coach, you right. You right, coach. My mindset, because I because you know I come from the inner city, and I and to make a quarter million dollars on the side is good. I was feeling comfortable. I'm like, you need to mash the gas, but not mash the gas to make more money. I said you should mash the gas because it's young girls that need this program. Yeah, this program that's showing them the beauty they have on the inside should be in a thousand schools. So start contracting this thing out. Build out the framework. Hire some other people to run the program. So she thought I was stretching her to make more income. I'm like, the income going to come. Let's focus on making more impact. Does that make sense? No, that makes perfect sense. Oh, my God. So how are you helping people outside? Because I know you have an amazing academy. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about this and how you're helping people to craft their stories and get them to create that impact that you are talking about man so one thing i'm really proud of man is is in my life everything i do i try my best to under promise and over deliver i just i just you naturally stay in a place of overflow when you have that mindset Mm. right and so we started our i started the next level speakers academy in 2020 i was getting people in my dms since 2017 can you coach me can you mentor me people that used to be in the league and i never had time When the pandemic hit, I was like, shoot, all my gigs is virtual. I can create a program now. Like, I was still getting to the bag, bro. But Mm -hmm. as as opposed to them paying me $25,000, they like, if it's virtual, we only got $8,000. I'll take that. I ain't got to leave the crib. 
I can have on bas- I can have on basketball shorts and, and set my little camera up. So I was doing that and I was like, now I got time to build up the academy. And after a few months, God showed me this is bigger than just a coaching program. Again, this like discipleship, you really helping to build up the kingdom, like helping people. Mm-hmm. And so one thing I can pride myself on, man, our program not was, is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So much so that E.T., the number one motivational speaker in the world, there is nobody that's more dominant whose stuff on YouTube has been used over and over and over again, had a speaker's program, saw ours, and was like, you know what? This is that next level. Shut mm. his down mm. and came over and joined us. Ooh. So now me, Dr. Eric Thomas, Inky Johnson have come together and now we got the Next Level Speakers Academy 2.0 program. Mm. And then in addition to that, because some people's like, I'm not ready for the program. I'm going to just join a training or something like that from time to time. And that's what we do. But, man, we're committed to helping people monetize their message and share their story. Mm. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> and because <and> people, <laughs> people look at me. People look at me like, bro, you getting forty to $50,000 to speak? I'm like, bro, y'all don't even know what Inky getting. And <laughs> ET getting 200000 he was, I mean, I talked to E one time. He was like, "Yeah, I got this one organization. I'm gonna I'm cut them a deal and work with them. I'm a, I'm a, I'm only charging one seventy five. I was like, "Bro, <laughs> what are we talking about here?" Mm-hmm. Black men, though. That's amazing. With a uh, with a different type of spirit of excellence out yeah. here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But we had singular focus. We've been locked in. So somebody else would hear like two hundred thousand. Yeah, but he been doing it for thirty years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's been speaking in what, what programs in the hood with a small group of people. The same passion you see him give with I, at IBM mm-hmm. or in Dubai on, on the big stage where all the lights and the smoke would be the same passion he would give people in Huntsville, Alabama. He's got 30 years of a track worker consistently doing it. Inky Johnson got 18 years. I've got 14 years. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it just takes that longevity um, it takes that consistency. It mm-hmm. takes that 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 spirit of excellence, the purity of heart, um, and then it's only a matter of time. But now we got a framework to help people go to the bro Donovan. Bro, can I just tell you about Donovan? Go go. We bro, know Donovan, bro, Donovan Tolbert lives in South Carolina. Shout out to South Carolina. I say that because that's not a big market. Mm-hmm. I want to say that because some people are in big cities and they're experiencing success, and somebody might be like, "Yeah, well, you in Chicago?" No, no, no. My man in a small town in South Carolina. And my man did six figures his first year with us and had never, ever spoken before he got in our program. Mm. Mm. Say that again. He had never spoken. Because somebody thinks I got to have years my of experience. Man had, my happen. man had zero experience. Chris Singleton, that's my guy, man of God, powerful story. He also lives in South Carolina. Them boys in South Carolina are going crazy. Fact. He's my first seven-figure speaker. Mm. He did $1.1 million last year. I'm mm. so proud of him. And when he got with us, he was doing okay. He was making maybe 2500 I'm like, bro, we changing all of that. Changed his website, gave him all the game. He began to apply it two years later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I'm sharing that because for those of you all that's listening to us and you tapped in with, with David Shans, you tapped in with the Social Proof Podcast, like we got social proof. Like my Instagram and our Next Level Speakers Academy page is flooded with people that's experiencing this on a high level. Yep. But I want you to know that your message can be a business. Mm-hmm. And I think the biggest thing that frustrates me is people wonder, it, well, maybe it just happened for them. I could literally name off a hundred people that I know in our program mm-hmm. that's making six figures that's getting to the best. And so when I read the word of God and it says that God is not a respecter of persons, mm-hmm. for those of y'all that's not familiar with it, when it says God is not a respecter of persons, that means he's not looking at us like status. Mm-mm. Like, oh, well, you're a CEO or, or you're a Kingsbury. You come from this family or you're black or you're white or you're educated. He like, I ain't on that. I love all y'all. Yeah. I can bless all of y'all. But it's very few of us that really got that faith that really take it serious and we do it on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then there are some people that want to speak because of how it makes them feel or because they want that credibility, but they don't realize, man, people are out here hurting. Yeah. I just did a virtual gig, bro, and I poured my heart out to them kids, bro. It was a school in New Mexico, bro. They struggling. Half the kids is like living in cars and shelters. Gang violence is through the roof. You know what I'm saying? All of them in poverty. Half the parents is immigrants. Like, bro, they struggling, bro. I poured my heart out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I've been called to do. And so... You know, it's interesting when I look at the landscape and the speaking industry, people don't realize how big of a demand it is. Mm. And there aren't enough speakers. 
Where it's 400,000 conferences that take place every single year in America alone. Marcy. There are 1.7 million companies and corporations in America alone. They all have conferences. They all need professional development and staff training. They all need presenters. Mm -hmm. It ain't enough speakers out here. Mm -hmm. So now I'm building up and we're raising up a generation of speakers that's going to speak, that's going to add supplemental income to their family, that's going to help them build wealth and change lives. Man, listen, for, for you for you people that are out there watching and listening right now, listen, I always say, what does God, confidence, and coincidence have in common? <laughs> you can be confident that God is not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this, listening to this, this is not a coincidence Come that on. you're hearing Facts. this. So after you hear this, it's not like, oh, I got to go back and pray. I got to go back and meditate or think about it. Your answer is right here. Right. It's Facts. not a coincidence that you're watching and listening to this in this moment. Facts. Nella, right. what's going on over there? I feel you're going to say I, something. Go ahead. Look, I've been listening. I've been listening. But really quick, I have to shout out K Ann. Thank you so much for the super chat, K Ann. We greatly appreciate you. Thank you, K Ann. Do, Do it for the kids. Do it for the kids. But really quick, in the chat, a young lady said that she is so excited. She signed up for your challenge oh, next week. What's her name? Did her name is, let's see, where you at, young lady? Uh, Tibra, Tabria, T Tabria, Tabria, Tabria. Three, three days with me. Yes, ET, David Shans, Jessica mm. Lundy. Mm. Next week gonna be fire. It's going to be lit. Tell us about this challenge. It's a yeah, three day let's, challenge. Let's, let's talk let's about so, so in, in the simplest forms, it is a three day training experience mm. with me, ET, Dave, and Jessica Lundy. People. I don't know if they saw the interview I had that aired, you know, Monday with Jessica, but she's a dynamic speaker. She's so dope and her heart so pure. We hired her. She works now with our organization. Ooh. So she's our keynote writing coach. And she beat out a competition in Detroit, Michigan to be the face of a news network and beat out 1,500 people. Mm. Like this sister is Let's a go. beast. Peace. And so we spent in three days giving out the exact framework that me and ET and Inky have used over the last over two decades mm. to build out our businesses. And so it's like 100, 200 bucks. And we only do that because we want people who are kind of serious. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If it was free, it'd be thousands of people that register and a small fraction show up. No, 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 no. You I'm about to bless y'all so much. And you know what makes me proud? People in the chat, I asked them on day two, if you had to pay for it, what was it worth? They like 500, 1500, $20,000. Like the game we given, my homegirl going to be so blessed when she mm. realized. Why? Because I don't, because I don't need it. I promise I don't need that ninety seven. He don't need it. And I ain't trying to flex. No, no. I'm I, just being I know honest. You. You like, I got some it. investments in place. I ain't never gotta speak again. Like, I'm I'm really blessed. I don't have to do it. I literally like helping other people find their message and monetize their story. So this challenge, this three day training next week, is gonna be special. I mean, awesome. I, I, so really quick. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. Let's give them a little sneak peek. Now, I'm a I'm a this kind of selfish, but what are some ways that they can monetize? their their stories and for those who might be watching you right now watching us right now and they're like i'm already getting paid for gigs but i need that extra monetization i might be only making a five hundred dollars but what else can i do to get that to get that money so uh, so was yes a good question so there's two types of people out here there are there are those that say i mean i'm getting 500 i'm getting a thousand dollars i want to be able to scale i just talked to one of our guys yesterday his name is dustin he's doing really good doing like $70,000, $80,000 a year speaking. He, he's still a pastor. So he's a pastor mm -hmm. and he does real estate. Mm -hmm. He speaks on the side and made like 70, 80 grand last year. Mm. But you know what I told him when I got on him yesterday? I said, hey, I hear you. I said, but your problem is you feel like, man, 70, 80 grand, like the, I'm making more speaking part-time than the church. I'm like, but bro, you don't even realize this is a whole other level to go to. So I told him, don't eat his seeds. Mm. This is for those of y'all that's getting opportunities. Don't eat your seeds. What does that mean? He might have a school or organization that might have four or five grand, but he don't, he don't spend the 1500 it takes to have a videographer be with him. Mm -hmm. So I was like, your next level is to continue to invest into your business. This ain't like a one-time thing. You want to continue to invest in your business. And so that's how people can monetize their message, their story. When you get these opportunities, put it back in. I remember years ago in Huntsville, Alabama, when me and my wife quit our jobs, and I finally started getting $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 consistently. And I was like, man, we can take a few trips now. We yeah. can shop. We can eat out. God said, don't eat your seeds. Mm. Mm. He was like, and I still want you paying 30% tithe and offering to your local church. 
and I still want you investing back into your business. You know what? You can't afford to be out here doing shopping sprees. Now mm -hmm. I can afford that now, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Gotta so one day you can do what you want to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you have people out here now. If I can give them this game, yes, they're not ahead. getting paid a five hundred or a thousand dollars. Get zero. They only speaking for free. So I will say this to them: delayed is not denied, mm. and you can't beat God given. No. Man, now you don't know how many times I had thoughts myself because I'm a monster on the inside. Don't get it twisted, oh, bro. I'm, yeah, I'm crucifying the flesh every day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got that. My I used to pull kick doors back in the day. I was already you know saying know. pounds of weed. Like I wasn't this nice Christian guy I am mm -hmm. today, right? But I tell people all the time: you can't beat God given. And I remember one time I was thinking, like, man, God, I'm getting a whole bunch of opportunities to speak for free. But I think they're trying to take advantage of me. And God says, son, it's not possible for them to take advantage of you. You my son. Like, I'm with you. I'm going to blow your mind. That's, don't, even, don't even worry about that. You just keep blessing them. So everybody that's out here that's speaking for free, I want to just encourage you. Keep your heart pure. Keep adding value. But there are some things you can do. And I'm going to give you a few things now. And we're going to go even deeper next week. Is you can get an in-kind letter. There's a way that you can get a tax write-off from speaking. You can gather pictures and, and photos and testimonials. You can get referrals. You get to practice your speech. Like, there are so many different ways that you can maximize and monetize even free free speaking engagements as mm -hmm. you're building out your platform and your brand. Mm. Mercy. Y'all getting a lot of gems early. Facts. <laughs> how, how many people you, who do we got on there? About to, how uh, right now, how many people we got on? You on the live? People on there. On this live. <laughs> 143. And we only got 45 likes. Y'all disrespectful. 143? 143 people are watching right now. Y'all better go ahead and like, hit that like button. 143. Talk yeah, to me. Yeah, like it, but I need 43 of y'all to go over and sign up for this um, challenge. challenge. Yes. At least 43 look, out of that 143. You know, you know what I should have? Nick probably change. I should probably have her put 100% satisfaction money back guarantee. Because mm. the, the, here's, the, here's the reason why. Out of the 143 people that's watching, they see the value. They, they might just question like, but man, if I if I pay this, you know, $97 or whatever, it's like half for, for Dave's people. Like if they go to the link we provided, if I pay that, like, is it gonna be, is it gonna be worth it? You know what I'm saying? Cause some mm -hmm. people, when you see a hundred dollars or they see two hundred, they question like, is it really worth it? You know what I'm saying? But they don't understand, they don't they still getting to know me. Yeah. And they don't really understand my passion for it. And so I might tell Nick to put satisfaction guarantee money back. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, let me tell y'all real quick because I'm on. a walking testimony. Come on. So a couple years ago, I was on a free master class of Jeremy's, okay? A mm. free master class. And I implemented just a couple steps that he gave us. And y'all, your girl getting some schmutty. <laughs> okay but also i was able to seriously hone in on how to create my story mm -hmm. all right and really drive home certain points so y'all if you questioning whether or not this is right or or like is it worth it trust and believe it's yep. worth it don't yep. even don't even question it okay if, if i could shout out my man edward DeShazer. He's been in our he's in our program. He's emerged as like a leader in our community because he just got a great heart. But he's like the director of a school in Wisconsin. And he still make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm. If I could talk about Natasha Shabazz, Natasha Shabazz, you know she's a black woman with a last name like Shabazz. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she, she did seventy thousand dollars in like six months and got to a point where she quit her government job. Mm. And you know, people be saying, you don't quit the government. You, you know what I'm saying? That. Like mm -hmm. But I'm just letting people know like what's possible. And there are three types of people that's watching this. And there's three types of people we're going to be training. Mm -hmm. It's going to be those that have zero experience. I actually like those because I'm like, I, now I can build you from the ground up. Right. right. Then there are those that got some experience, but they not really getting paid. It's like, okay, I can help you make some tweaks so you can start really getting to the bag. But then there are those that's like, man, Jeremy, last year I did 115,000. I did 85,000. Like I'm doing good. How do I get to a quarter million? Right. How do I make six figures a quarter per year? And so there are three different phases of people in their journey and we're going to support them all. Wow. Yeah, bro. Wow. I almost I done lost my question, but it's okay. I keep a couple. No, I got it. I got it. You got I got it. it. I got Go it. Ahead. I got it. Yeah. I know you're pointing out the different type of um, 
avatars or characters that are speaking Mm -hmm. because some people may have that challenge in their mind like well you know I work at the airport or I do this right here how can I do speaking in that at the same time like man I gotta I'm with this government job like how I'm gonna balance that it's it's not possible maybe this speaking thing isn't for me let me just right so so that's where the discipline kicks in Mm -hmm. because you know if you have if you have a person that has a full-time job if there are events that come up that's Monday through Friday. Well, now you have to take your part, your uh, your paid time off or your vacation time. Mm. So there is that discipline. Or sometimes you might have a boss. Maybe you work. I got one guy that work that washed cars in our community. He getting to it. He he like man, I'm quitting this car washing job. But his boss would let him get off. And then some people that might work at the airport or car dealership. But it's like okay, if you average two engagements per month. Like that's just that's just you ain't telling your boss, hey, I gotta fly to Cincinnati to speak to get a quick yeah, forty five hundred. Yeah. You just like, hey, I'm gonna take my sick mm-hmm. leave or pay vacation, whatever mm-hmm. it is. But you know you're doing that to jump on the plane to go and get that engagement. So it just really takes discipline. What's the typical time frame from somebody starting starting this program and then? Good question. But it's all over the place. It, I know it can vary depending yeah. on the person, yeah. depending on the discipline, depending on the the tenacity. But the average person, what's the the average time frame where it's like, oh, you know what? This person then started monetizing at this level within there, this span of time. Yep, good question. There, is, I would be. It would be unethical for me to say a specific time frame or amount because everybody is different. Everybody's story, everybody's message, everybody's marketing and branding, everybody's efforts that they put in. I literally have people in our community that it takes six, seven months before they get their first engagement. Mm-hmm. But then there are several that's getting to the bag in month two or month three. It really mm-hmm. just depends on how much effort you put in and then the market, right? Because it's like if you want to speak in the educational space, but then you land, you you launch your website and you actually start your speaking business in May. Well, June, July, August, you got to let three months pass before they even give an invitations to come back to school to speak. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I tell everybody it's almost like a field. You know what I'm saying? You got to first get the land. Then you got to cultivate the soil. Right. Then you got to plant the seeds and then you got to water it. Different soil can enrich different plants. Some plants need a whole lot of water. Some don't need that much. Some plants are going to produce a crop in a few months. Some it could take a whole year. Mm. It really just depends. So I just tell people, don't let that deter you. Stay locked in. Believe that delayed is not denied. And just keep planting them seeds. And just keep watering your territory. And eventually, God going to expand that territory. Now, you gave... You gave That's the morning powerful. meetup a little game. I'm gonna ask you to give them give give you two. I guess I'll let y'all in on the morning <laughs> meetup secrets, okay? You gave us a little game of how you started taking things to different schools. Oh, you want me to bless them. <laughs> <laughs> she want me to bless the people. I, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that for the folk that pay ninety seven dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm just gonna give y'all a taste. You want me to give it to them now? Give, give them a little taste. So you know, somebody was just like, "Well, Jeremy, how, how do I get my foot in the door in the educational space?" And so I'm like, "Man, I read in the book, it's better to give than to receive." Right. And so and this is something this ain't nothing I learned. Everything I teach is what we've learned and experienced over the years. So fun fact about me is I used to want to be a pharmaceutical rep. Mm. That used to be my ideal job when I was around college or after college when I was kind of working. I was like, man, if I could just get on with a pharmaceutical rep company, because at that time I wasn't fully living in my purpose. I was just chasing money. I knew I could make six figures. So as I began to study pharmaceutical reps and kind of see how they're successful, I realized like, oh, to get into the doctor's office, they go with courtside tickets. Or they go with gift cards to restaurants or they go with gifts Mm -hmm. to get the doctors, the physician's attention. And then they say, "Okay, all right, well, come on in and let's meet with you. You gave me tickets to the game. So I realized, like, man, if I'm going to these schools, I was knocking on the doors. I was emailing. Hey, I'm Jeremy, a motivational speaker. I would like to speak for your school. No, thank you. I changed the game and I went to Dunkin Donuts. I go to Krispy Kreme. I started with a half dozen, full dozen. Not the Krispy Kremes. Yeah, I print my There's EPK one. up. And the ones. And oh, for sure. And Especially don't let, if they fresh. And I walk up in that school like, not only do I have the Krispy Kreme, but the red light was on. <laughs> oh, bro, they bust out laughing. Because at schools, the gatekeeper who really run the schools is the women at that front office. Yep. Mm-hmm. It ain't the principals or the administrators, right? And so I will go in with donuts. I will print my EPK. EPK is the electronic press kit. I will print that up. I will tape it on top of the donut box and say, hey, my name is Jeremy. Speak these things as if they are right. I'm mm-hmm. a national motivational speaker. And y'all right here in my backyard. 
I just feel like we should know each other. Can I give you some donuts? I hope this ain't going to mess up your diet. <laughs> and then they be like, boy, give me them donuts. You know I'm on a diet. Don't you tell nobody. Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, we in there talking. And they like they like aunties. You know what I'm saying? And they like, baby, now I'm baby. Mm-hmm. I'm not Jeremy. Baby, come back at 12. Or come back after school dismissed. Or a fight just broke. I'm going to call you when he's in the office. Or then he ain't the one. He, he, he be tripping. You need to go get with the guy in the sky. Bro, they giving me the whole game. Mm. And so I literally showed them on the morning meetup, I showed them a screenshot of one of I want you to read it. Can you read it to the people? I'll read it to them. I you. want you to read this it. here, right? Because this is a cap-free zone. And I just want folks to really understand This is what they the need, results. that authenticity right here, man. The authenticity. Back. Just read this. This is from um this is from my boy. Uh, this is from my boy. Um this is from my boy Fendi. I'm thinking like this don't make this don't make no sense. People is out here getting Absolutely amazing uh, opportunities out here. Let me just try to find this here. I'm just I'm just showing you what happens when it comes to um, the strength of the donut runs. I want people to really understand what happens with the donut runs. So read that real read that real quick. That's one of our guys that I've been coaching and mentoring. This in our community. All right, let's go to donut run. The power of the donut run. All these engagements came from dropping off donuts to schools in the summer. Spent about 150 on 15 dozen donuts and got five schools that paid 5K each and have been able to impact over 10,000 students in the process. Once you're in with a distinct, once you're in with a distinct and you know a do, and you do a good job, they refer to you, refer you to their friends and one opportunity leads to another. Moral of the story. Give out the donuts, connect with administrators, <laughs> follow up, then follow up again. Mm, you Come never on. know what 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 the li- what lies on the other side of that opportunity. The donut run. The donut mm. run. So my man spent one hundred fifty fifteen fifty dollars. Fifteen dozen donuts. Fifteen different dozen donuts went to fifteen schools. Three of them let him in and booked them and paid them five. My man turned one hundred and fifty dollars into twenty five thousand dollars and impacted ten thousand kids' lives. Mm. So that's free game, man. Look, mm. yeah. it, y'all welcome. Yeah, y'all are welcome. Sure. I just wanted you to read it so people can see. And he put this in our word because you know in our community we mm-hmm. got like a private Facebook uh, group chat. He put that in there, bro. And people was like, yep, me too, man, me too. So it's stuff like that that I've learned over the years that I put into our challenge, I put into our trainings, Mm -hmm. and then say, go out here and implement. That's all I ask Mm -hmm. is that you execute. Don't sign up for the training if you ain't going to execute it. You just want to be motivated because your spirit going to be lifted. But I want you to go out and execute the game plan and make the impact you're supposed to make. Yeah, yeah. Mercy. So if y'all was wondering if it's worth it, that alone, oh man, right there tells you it is going to be worth it. But y'all, really quick, we gonna get into these super chats because y'all just blessing us. Y'all just blessing the churn today, okay? Yeah, First go. and foremost, of course, KN, we already thanked you, but thank you again for the ten dollars super chat. Let's kid, let kids play podcast, the activity playhouse, y'all. She is a beast, the mom playologist. If you got little kids and you trying to figure out how to teach them. Hit Nayetta up because she a beast at it. Okay, so thank you so much for the $5 super chat. A shot of sunshine. Thank you so much for the $2 super chat. Major hustles. D. Shoe Solutions. I'm going to get it, D. I'm going to get it. Shoe (laughs) Solutions. (laughs) Thank you so much for the $10 super chat. And King's Chambers Grooming Company. I'm sorry, King's Chambers Grooming Company. Dave's not here, so I can't give you the whole you know, ad commercial talk about I had a mu- I didn't have a mustache ahead before I used this. But thank you so much for the super chat. We greatly appreciate you guys and all that you guys are sowing into this the children in the inner cities. But y'all, we're gonna bring this in for a landing because can, <sighs> Jeremy can, can, You about ahead. to kick it to me for some final remarks? Because yeah. I wanna I wanna share something else. Go real ahead, quick. share up. Just you, you I, something shifted when you said, you know, y- y'all are doing this for the kids, mm-hmm. right? So one thing I've been I've been teaching on is like I'm a kingdom speaker. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when I speak, I'm trying to build up, you know, because I'm a Christian, as, as folks can tell by now, but I'm trying to build up God's kingdom. It's like, yo, there's a certain level of impact that I should be making out here. Yeah. And so there are some people that's like, yeah, I got a message. Yeah, I got a story. It's cool to supplement my income. Just take a moment and think about how your life is going to change and other people's lives that you're going to be able to change. You know what I'm saying? Like when you 
really say I'm about to go all in and do this. Mm-hmm. So like y'all see, okay, the last few years we didn't put 60 kids in college, feed a thousand people per month. That's not, that's not even the the weekly request I get. People just swear I'm an 18 year old, bro. Can you sponsor this kid? Like, so, but it's, think about the impact that you can make. Mm-hmm. So I tell people all the time, bro. I, I, we had our award ceremony last year at our annual conference. People that was making fifty thousand a year, a hundred thousand and up, and it was like a two hour award ceremony. Like people get into the bag. But one person I got choked up, bro. My man Nate Evans, because he came up on stage to get his second award with his son. Mm. And I'm looking at his son. His son may be one, cute as can be, but Nate getting $15,000 every time he speaks. Mm. Bro, I'm looking at his son like, what kind of world are you going to grow up in when your daddy is getting $15,000 to speak at schools? Mm -hmm. I was choked up because I'm just like, man, it's not even about us or the impact that we make. So you got to ask yourself, for those of y'all that's thinking about speaking, some of y'all got mamas that need, bro, I'm going to Dallas this weekend, because my grandmama turned 80, bro, and I booked my mama a first-class flight because she traveled how I travel. My mom had me when she was 16 years it. old. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling people, like, bro, stop playing with it. My, we sent my mama on a cruise in a, in a month or so. My mama had a stroke years ago. She worked really hard, got up to six figures a year, was the head of HR for this company, respected by her peers, had a stroke, can't work no more. I said, don't trip, mama. Your son is good. She said, what you mean? I said, mama, with every good investment, you should get a good return. She said, son, what you mean? I said, mama, you can have whatever you like. She was like, I don't understand what you're saying, son. I said, you had me at the age of 16 and you worked your butt off and you loved on me and you nurtured me and you sold into me and you spoke life to me and you prayed over me. It's time for you now to get a return on your investment. Whatever you want is mm-hmm. done. Yeah. So you got to ask yourself for those of y'all that's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm kind of coasting. Who in your family, who in your community needs you to blow up in this area of speaking so that you can be a blessing to them? Yeah. You know, I don't need much, bro. I could sleep on Shan full time, bro. I don't really need much. But to be able to provide for my family and others, like that's really what moves me. Mm-hmm. And so when I say like I'm a kingdom speaker, I'm like, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to bless people. I'm trying to help people. I remember when I was working with Madison Mission, our local church in Alabama, I remember feeling like, man, we going out in communities, knocking on doors, trying to bless people. And I come back to the church and the church is like, we ain't got the budget for that. And I used to be angry. Like, man, the church broke. God said, no, nah, son, you broke. Mm. You the one living check to check. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. I was just like, "Hmm." You got checked. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, I felt that. He was like, bro, you broke. He was like, bro, there's so much inside you. You Mm. should be printing money off your gift, off your anointing, off your story. So that's when I began to realize, like, man, it's on me. Mm -hmm. I don't put it on nobody else. And I feel like half the stuff I do when I take the stage and I teach and I train, I try to help other people realize the greatness that's inside them. One of my homeboys was like, Jay, bro, when you be speaking, bro, you be snapping. Like, you want everybody to win. I'm like, bro, why not? Yeah. I want everybody to win, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can live a, 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 an amazing, fulfilling life. Is life perfect? No. Can it be painful? Hell to the yes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But but that's that's the part of life. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you got ups and downs. You got mountain highs. You got valley lows. Like, that's life. And I just really, our organization is really focused on helping people get everything they're supposed to get out of their life. The idea of next level living is becoming everything that you've been called to be. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's what I'm committed to doing and I'm going to help people do that to the day I die. That's Powerful. Fire. That's fire. I'm going to need one of those hoodies. I'm not, gonna ask, I'm, not, I'm not asking another question because I already know who I'm dealing with. Go ahead. Ask one more. We, real quick. Do it. Talk to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm listening. You, I, I, you know we, rub, we, we, we mm-hmm. touch and agree on things, mm-hmm. man. Um, there's a verse that comes to my mind from the the amazing book, mm-hmm. and that they were all these people they were following they were mm-hmm. following Christ, and they was like, well, mm-hmm. I'll take I'll follow you wherever you go. Mm-hmm. I'll go wherever you go, Jeremy. I'll mm-hmm. take you wherever you go. He said, okay. He said, foxes have dens, mm-hmm. birds have nests. Mm-hmm. Son of man ain't got nowhere to lay his mm-hmm. head. Mm-hmm. And that was amazing to me when I read that because he first thing he started describing was living conditions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's not just living conditions in terms of home, but living conditions in terms of your diet, your mindset. It may be your home. Basically, it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uncomfortable, this journey. So the question I have for you is, and it's going to, he said, it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. What does it cost you to be where you are now? Because a lot of people, like, again, they see it. And he said, oh, they got, foxes have dens, birds have nests. It's going to be uncomfortable on this journey. Not saying it won't be rewarding, but what does it cost you? Um, Because sometimes we don't count the cost. No, no, that's real, man. It has, um, it's 
cost me a lot, bro. Um, it's, it's cost me a lot. Um, Cause you can't move how you want to move. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the level of discipline and I'm a flawed man. We all make mistakes. Right. But it's just like, it's just, I so, so often I want to do what I want to do and what makes me feel good. And God is like, bro, I've called you the different. I've called you the better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I've experienced so much pain, so much heartbreak, so much internal suffering, mm -hmm. so much depression. You know what I'm saying? Got to speak, got to motivate, got to inspire others, got to point to them. But on the inside, feeling empty. You know what I'm saying? Feeling unloved. Like, bro, that's hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I, I would say it's, it's cost me happiness but i got peace mm. right like paul says we have been broke faced angry mobs worked to exhaustion endured sleepless nights gone without food he said we are they call us imposters but we are well known you know what i'm saying like we've been close to death but we haven't died you know what i'm saying like i'm just looking at life like man as painful as it's been it's been also very, very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I got to just move past what I want to do and who I want to be. And can I tell y'all what keeps me grounded? Man, bro, our team, bro. Yeah. God has blessed us with over 20 amazing individuals. Mm -hmm. So even when I want to be like, man, I want to do what I want to do. I'm 40 something years old. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like, nope, I got to stay. I got to stay like, I got people that's depending on me. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the team I've been blessed to have, I'm like, man, I want to be the best leader. I just reached out to my CEO coach a few days ago. was like, I need another book. He was like, okay, what's going on? Is there some challenges in your company? I was like, bro, I just want to be the best leader for my team. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I want to be the best leader. As I'm still meeting with my counselors, as I'm still meeting with my therapist. Yep, y'all heard it. I'm traveling the world, getting paid great money, able to do this, multiple businesses, great family. But I still got people that I sit at the feet. Bro, I got my marriage coach Shannon here with me. Mm -hmm. We about to go to mm -hmm. lunch and break bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, I still need help. And so it's cost me a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But too much is given. Much, much is, is required. required. Yeah. And so uh, I wouldn't change any, I wouldn't change any of it for the world mm. because what all I've gone through, God has exposed me to the world. Mm. That's deep. You asked. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Don't do it to her. No, I'm going to let you take it now. <laughs> all right. Well, y'all first and foremost, thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. Brother. Every thank time you, you come anywhere, you kill it. Yes, you sir. bless the people. We greatly appreciate, appreciate you and all the work that you do. It's, Nothing, nothing short of amazing, impactful, and powerful. Praise God. Appreciate so it. So we greatly appreciate you. Is there any last words that you want to leave these people with before we take it out? Yeah, you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Like, you deserve to be happy. Mm -hmm. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be free. Free with your time. Free with your finances. Like, you deserved it. I tell people, like, you went through all this hell, all this pain. You might as well get compensated for it. Mm. Or you've got all this genius, all this brilliance. Like, we can help brand you as an expert. Like, you deserve it. Mm. And so I just want people to know, like, they deserve it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to, you know, on earth, in earth, as it is in heaven, bro. I'm trying to live like that now. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah. I would just say to anybody listening and watching, like, you deserve it. And there were amazing things that God has in store for you. And just because God is in your life don't mean you're going to be absent of pain or challenges or things like that, but you deserve it. And all these things that's happening to you, we believe it's going to come around for your good. I look at pain, I look at tests, I look at trials, and then I look at how it makes me stronger. So when people are like, bro, you speak with such authority, it's because I haven't been now through there. Mm -hmm. I've experienced a lot of pain, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But my pain has now become my gain, and I'm able to add more value out here in the world. Mm. Awesome. Yep. Look, y'all, there y'all have it. Ain't no better way to end it. Ain't no better way to end it. So if you haven't done so already, open up your Instagram. Go ahead, follow Jeremy right on the screen. His Instagram handle is there. But also, please make sure that you join the challenge if you haven't done so already. I know mm -hmm. I saw a few. I got my seat in the chat. So congratulations let's to go, you. Let's go. All right. We are so happy for you. And of course, y'all. We appreciate y'all coming in today. I know it was a little bit shorter than usual, but you guys got the goods. Like, y'all got the goods. Got and the goods. if you don't know already, if you're sitting there and you say, look, I got a story to tell. I'm going through these steps. I'm ready to share my story. But the form that I want to share my story in is a podcast. Guess what? We got something for you, baby. Mm. So we want to go ahead, let you take it out. Take it out of here. 
And we're going to tell you a little bit about Podcast Summit. But until next, next week, we will see you right back here on Free Smoke. Free Smoke, Free Smoke. Podcast Summit 2023, baby. We in the building. What we doing? Yeah, Podcast Summit. That's what we're doing. This is one of those events that if you miss, you actually miss something. Everybody knows media is taking over and David Shares is leading the front. It isn't just about building a podcast and finding your message. It, it's about truly leveraging the power of podcasting. Create, don't wait. Everyone here is a content creator or emerging content creator or aspiring content creator. And we have learned the tools necessary to create our own work. I think it's a lot of people that just didn't register their comment. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, we're not tripping on general. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if, if sure. I, I told them, hey, look, if they're not on it, we'll double check. If we got to add it. I want everyone logged yeah. so we know what the final number is. Yeah. I'm really just tripping off of, you know, the VIP masterminds. So yeah. We have certain limits for all those. Yeah. The preparation for the podcast summit was grueling. Providing this experience for creators of color, the sun, the vibes, the feel of Miami. It was all worth it. We do have a limit on All Star. There's a certain amount of people we can feed. Well, we don't have a limit anymore because we have oh, the bigger room. Bigger room, yeah. Yeah, we'll just have to pay for it. Got it. Yeah. So you technically could still sell All Star and Masterminds, or have people upgrade. What do we deliver to a broad audience of people who are in the podcasting space? I came here to learn more about branding and how to expand it into a podcast. Some people are interested in podcasts, and they're coming to find out how they can finally launch this podcast that's in their head. So I'm also here to learn about how I can monetize my podcast that I'm looking to launch in September and protect my brand legally. But there's another group of people who have been podcasting, but they have no idea what they're doing. It's not growing. They're not getting more views. They're not getting more downloads. I want to learn how to monetize. I want to learn how to grow. I just want to learn how to, like, I guess, engage with the people more. I'm just a mom who just wanted to do something crazy. <laughs> but you're holding it intentionally so there's more energy outside. Correct. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, do, do your thing, man. Uh, how, how, if, if we're behind, how do we make up for it? Or we just push everything back a little bit? I think there are breaks that can, uh, that will naturally adjust. Got it. And okay. get us back on track. Yeah. What's the lobby looking like? Is it busy? Are they out there? Did they show up? So once I got out on the stage, I looked out and I saw a packed room on a Sunday. I was just energized. I was really just blown away because now I know that the people are here, we're about to feed. You see it? You see it? Y'all see it? Do you see it? In the back, do y'all see it? Can y'all feel it? Y'all know it? Your life is going to change in the next 12 months. Let me tell you about something I've never seen before. I've never actually seen a podcast booth set up for creatives to create in real time. So I'm talking about networking on steroids. You just met somebody in the room. You want to actually have a quick little interview or a quick little meeting. You could take them into one of the booths, ask them all the questions you really want to ask them in real time, record and document that, and actually put that content out right now. I've never seen that before. Crazy. Get where you need to get to how that's going. Uh, oh, that that Camera was shaking during the podcast interview, so we got to figure something out. I think when you're looking at production of anything, you should always be looking at it from a pessimistic perspective. What can I do to improve? What can I do to make this thing better? It might be the smallest change. People aren't looking at what's wrong. You could record a whole episode and there's a trash can behind you that nobody sees because nobody's looking at what's wrong. They're only looking at, oh, this is a good shot. Now that's the one thing you can't hide during a live event. You know what I mean? Like, say I launched a book. You don't know how many I sold. You know what I mean? Say I launched a t-shirt brand. Hey, get the shirts. I can be like, yo, it's popping. People are buying the shirts. Almost sold out. But a live event, like, if nobody's there, everybody knows that nobody's there. One of my biggest takeaways from the podcast summit so far was like an aha moment first when Donnie said, don't edit. I was like, mind blown, because I'll be doing the most with trying to edit my podcast and stuff. I actually launched my podcast yesterday, and then I got to actually experience the content room, and I got to film some episodes for my podcast. I have been able to network from the moment I got off my plane. Thank you guys so much for the podcast summit. This has been an amazing experience, and this is just day one.
Who believes they have a seven-figure podcast inside of them? It sounds good. It sounds real good. Get pen and paper out. Let's get to work. Me and my partner Donnie made an offer more on the entrepreneurial side where you can have us as business partners. David gets really nervous about like asking for the money. He gets excited about the product. He wants to do it all the time. Oh yeah, 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 we're gonna do this, do this, do this. But when it's time to ask for the money, he gets scared and it's all on me. <laughs> What's up, it's Rashad. One half of Your Leisure, I'm at the podcast summit. Right now, my boy David Shands put it together, and um, you know it's very important that we have this kind of dialogue because there's no blueprint, there's no college course to actually learn how to, you know, be a superstar in a new age in media. So these type of formats, these type of programs are extremely important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been wanting to create. I've always wanted to be one, but it's the it's the consistency part when yep. shit ain't working. It's yep. stuck. Yeah, yeah. So we. Well, that's what we're well, here go the thing. You don't know if it's not working. That's the problem. So like I said, when we was doing Thank God It's Monday, we had 50 people watching. Was it working or not? I don't. It was, we just didn't see the evidence till later. Okay. What's faith? The, the substance? The things hope for and the evidence things. So if you got faith that it's gonna work, as long as you know, listen, I say this, if you can get five people to listen, you can get 10. If you can get 10, you can get 50. If you can get 50, you can get 200. You see what I'm saying? Like. If, if you got people right, and so a lot of people get caught up because they don't got the big numbers and they ain't got the huge following. Right. Keep, stay consistent with the content. So a lot of on the side, but again, like you said, we don't want to box her in. I mean, if we can have them placed and then just quickly from like here, right here, after they sit. Ooh. That works, that works so good. We are yeah, um, setting up the just set the, for the Babis. Just keep them um, she is interviewing a surprise celebrity guest. Well, Rick Ross isn't yeah. coming anymore. He was supposed yeah. to be Trina's guest. So now we're trying to find another celebrity that's in Miami that'll come and interview. I am about to interview Trina. This was not originally a part of the program. There are some things that I'm going to ask her about stuff that I don't know about. the woes of uh, doing something good. And we were running on time, the whole time. So there's one issue. I guess I don't need to talk about that too much, but I mean, it's a part of the journey. Right? <laughs> if I'm being honest, man, the highlight of the conference for me was the testimonials. I mean, you, do, you put all this time and energy into an event, you're like, yo, did everybody have a good time? Was everyone pleased or are they gonna cancel me Monday morning? And the testimonials, the, the tears, the rave reviews, and it wasn't me, it was the fact that they got a, a gumbo of information that was tailored towards them. So the biggest thing I got yesterday was learning how to reach out to sponsors, get them the correct pitch deck going, and also when it comes to branding and making sure that whenever you're pushing yourself on YouTube that you have a good thumbnail and a good description. One thing that I learned that I'm going to implement immediately is one, make sure all my operations are in order, two, thinking about branding, specifically what Mario talked about of like, what brands can you actually work with and what does that look like to actually get sponsorship. The podcast summit in two days transformed my life and it just opened my mind as to how far I can go with my podcast, any pivots that I may need to make or any rebranding that I need to make. So we're just going bigger. We're just going bigger. We're just going bigger.